Is the Bad Boy Records curse true? They took millions and millions of dollars from us. Do I feel like I should have got more money? Absolutely. Many of the label's former artists say that they made hits and have little to show for it. How they say Diddy continues to make millions off their backs. I'm Justin Carter. This is TSR Investigates. Bad Boy Records is, without a doubt, one of the most iconic and legendary labels in music history, introducing us to artists like Carl Thomas, Total, Faith Evans, Mace, and of course, the late Notorious B.I.G. But with that legacy carries with it a reputation that label chief Sean Diddy Combs will put new artists on the map, make them household names, but never pays them. Earlier this month, video from Diddy's reality show Making the Band resurfaced online and went viral. The footage capturing the infamous Cheesecake Walk, which saw members of the rap group DeBan walking over 10 miles from New York's Times Square to Junior's restaurant in Brooklyn and back. That ultimately sparked conversation about how much they and other former bad boy acts were paid with many of the artists speaking out themselves. And it all boils down to contracts. Contracts, they say, gave them no publishing rights, very little money, and an opportunity that was created for them to fail. We, we sold the records. We, we had the number one show. We had three seasons. Like, we did all the work. And it's like everybody around bad boy was just helping us. Former Making the Band 2 star and the band member Freddie P says that Diddy made millions during the Making the Band days, but he says that that was not the case for him and his bandmates. How much did he promise to pay? What was the what was the contract deal? Man, we signed for like I think twenty five thousand a piece. You get what I'm saying? Like yeah, like twelve five up front and twelve five on the back end. Like once the album was done. So we was getting paid peanuts, man. Freddie says the only money he's received since DeBan's debut album, Too Hot for TV, came out in 2003 was in 2008. He says that the check came from Janice Combs, Sean Combs' mother. Have you made any royalties or have you got any residual checks since the show and since your projects have, um, man, have come out? Uh, man, I probably got, they say we signed with Janice Combs. How your mama get my publishing? I don't understand that. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just a lot of, anyway. They said we signed with Janice Cohn, so 2008, I got a check for like 25000 I didn't even know where that came from. While Freddie signed a standard competition show contract with MTV for the reality show, he says he also signed with Bad Boy on the strength that everything would work out. Their album, which debuted at number two on the Billboard 200, was a relative moderate success for Bad Boy, selling just over 500,000 copies, and it went on to be certified gold. In the contract situation, it was like a damn if you do, damn if you don't thing. You want to. Because you feel like, all right, well, I'm going to just take this and go in there and kick the dough down. Then we're going to restructure this. You get what I'm saying? Because you feel like I got to take this. If I don't, he's going to get the job to somebody else. Somebody got my bag. Somebody got my bag. Freddie's bandmate, rapper Babs Bunny, says she too signed a contract as a ticket to get in the business. Do you remember specifically what was in that contract, Babs? No. All I knew that was in the contract is that I was signing the bad boy. I was young. I was dumb. All I knew how to do was rap. That was it. The amount of money that was in my contract, I'm not going to say exactly how much it was, but I will say that I did take it to a lawyer and my lawyer did tell me it's fame, not fame and fortune. I don't receive residuals from the show as far as like MT. That's MTV. You know what I'm saying? I don't receive residuals for that, but I do get a BMI check. You know what I'm saying? I did write my stuff. But their claims are not the first. In 1999, hip hop trio The Locks started the Free The Locks campaign, vying to be released from their bad boy contract. Diddy did let them out of their label deal, but kept 50% of their publishing. This all came to a head in a now classic 2005 radio interview with Angie Martinez. How much money are we talking? A couple million? I would say a couple million. I can't even say, I'm not even sure. We paid a couple mil to get out. We paid almost three million to get out. We to get off no, Bad Boy. Yeah, we yeah. had no million dollar budget. We did one album there, Inch. We did one album. We did Money, Power, Respect It. This ain't for we, albums. This is for life. This is for life, too. This, this is why it's worth killing. It ain't like... When this contract's up, 
So if this is so for the rest of your life, if you make a song, you have the he way got, it stands. He gets money no matter what. If we make a give it to yeah. me or in the club, he's gonna make more off that than we are. In 2012, then label artist Machine Gun Kelly complained he hadn't seen one sixteenth of his 1.5 million dollar deal. In a radio interview, Lil C said that Diddy bought Notorious B.I.G.'s publishing for two hundred thousand dollars in 1995 because Biggie apparently was broke despite having a hit record. While those claims were refuted, it seems that Diddy still owns his publishing. In 2020, rapper Mace also claimed that Diddy denied his $2 million offer to buy his publishing back. In a now deleted Instagram post, Mace said that Diddy told him the only way he could get it back is if he matched the offer from a European man who was looking to purchase it. That didn't seem to pan out because in early March 2022, Mace dropped Oracle 2, the liberation of Mason Betha, calling Diddy out for exploiting artists. They didn't try to dangle money, they didn't think I'd ever leave never pay the artists, but they love to pay the freaks And remember Brian Breeding, he's the youngest member of the R&B group B5 He was 8 years old when he signed with Bad Boy Because we joined the industry so young, we were in it for the craft, we are in it for the passion But as you get older and wiser, you're like, oh, there's something off in the business area that, And you recognize, oh, we were taking advantage of oh, Would you argue that B5 never received even maybe a million dollars after all of that work that you did, all of those hits that were on the radio, had, did you guys Definitely even? Not. <laughs> Definitely not. Yes, and not even close, I would say. Breeding says the only money that the group got was from live performances and sales from merchandise. He says that he gets one royalty check from the soundtrack of a Disney movie, the sequel to The Emperor's New Groove. We did get your head in the game for High School Musical and it was getting played on commercials in rotation heavily. We like broke records to where it's like, wow, we never, like you guys were the first group that had four singles on the top 10 playlists on Radio Disney. It would be like one song from High School Musical from B5, one song from Hannah Montana from B5. It's been almost 20 years now and bottom line, Breeding says that the group was not savvy with business with what's known as a standard contract they signed and it cost them. So how can an artist or group sell a lot of records and still end up broke? Two words, recoupable expenses and some contracts, recording costs, marketing, promotion, tour support, and corporate costs are all recoupable from the artist's share of the profit. The late Lisa Left Eye Lopez famously broke this down in an episode of VH1's Behind the Music when discussing how her group TLC found themselves selling over 10 million albums and still they were broke. This is how a group can sell 10 million records and be broke. Every time an album gets sold, TLC gets 56 cents. So 10 million records, $5.6 million. Seems like a lot of money. Well, it's not a lot of money when the record company has spent $3 million to record your album. And in the record business, we pay all costs back to the record company. We pay recording costs, video costs. So now we have $2.6 million left. Well, guess what? When you have that much money, you're in about the 47, 48.49% tax bracket. So that immediately gets deducted to $1.3 million. Then you split the rest three ways. You got about $300,000 a piece, if that much. As the music business has changed, so have new artist contracts. We took all these claims to entertainment attorney Daryl Cohen. Just in the general rule that most people refuse to listen to is go to a lawyer who knows music. There's the other side of the coin. I'm a young recording artist. I have no where to record other than my basement and the studio is not a good one. I need someone to spend some money to go ahead and make what I do sound commercially viable. And so as a result of that, I'm going to give away more than I should. But if it's done correctly, at some point in time, it turns because it's got to be a good deal for both sides or all the sides. If it's not, it doesn't work very well. So do these claims represent all experiences with bad boy artists? Well, not quite. In a 2020 radio interview with The Breakfast Club, former rapper Loon, he shared about his time with bad boy and says it was the exact opposite. Jaden was on the radio one time. You know, getting that puff out the publishing. So somebody <laughs> had the audacity to call me. Classic. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Somebody had called me like, yo, Moon, why you ain't called up there? And I'm like, dog, I own my publishing. Like, I don't have this problem. What advice do you have for future artists out there, you know, now knowing what you know? I would say to study the industry. To young babs, to all the young artists out there, 
Make sure your business is tight. The harsh reality is that Bad Boy Records is not the only music label out there accused of not properly paying their artists. This has been happening since the very beginning of the music industry for years now, specifically with black artists. Sources close to Bad Boy and Mr. Combs have said repeatedly that the claims in our report are not true. For TSR Investigates, I'm Justin Carter. Hello roommates and thank you for watching our YouTube channel. Do you want more TSR Investigates? Be sure to subscribe and check us out at theshaderoom.com.